So I'm, I'm not going to keep you long. I'm just going to ask you a simple question. What simple thing would you do to save your life? And this is more than just academic for me. You see, for the past 20 years, even more, I've been working in developing countries in Africa and Asia and Latin America and trying to get poor people health care. And the most important thing that I've learned over the years is that it's the simple things. It's the simple things that have the big impact. And I didn't learn this in, in medical school. I actually learned it on the bedside as I watched a, a woman die. Her name was Lorraine. And I'll never forget this woman. She was born poor and unwanted. And rejected by her mother when she was just six weeks old, abandoned in a house, and had it not been for her cries, she actually would have died. But a person heard it and picked her up and took her to an old woman who we knew would bring her in. And she actually lived with this woman, this old woman becoming her 16th child. And like poor children all around the world, she had to begin working as just a child. And by the time she was 12, she was working as a maid in somebody's house, cleaning it and taking care of children not much younger than herself. And like too many poor girls around the world, she ended up getting pregnant and dropping out of school. And then she had her baby, and then four more. She was always taking care of other people that she never really took care of herself. So, when she began to have pain in her pelvis and began to have vaginal bleeding, and she knew that this was not right because she was already postmenopause at this time, she said, I'm going to have to go to the doctor. She didn't like to go to the doctor. And that was actually when they discovered that she had a sexually transmitted disease that she had gotten from a partner many, many years earlier. It was a virus that would actually kill her. It was called the human papillomavirus, or HPV. And that's the virus that causes cervical cancer. We actually don't hear about it much now in the United States because we, we have good treatment, we have good access to care. However, in developing countries, they actually don't have this. And so that's why 80% of the women who get this and die are in developing countries. And so by the time they had discovered this in Lorraine, the virus that had started on her cervix began to spread throughout her body and then eventually went to her brain. But the end of her life was just so different than the beginning. One, she knew she was loved. She knew she was wanted. And she wasn't being left to die alone. She was being held by her youngest son, who by this time was a grown man himself. And Lorraine's life has been, had an incredible impact on me. She was different from most of my patients in many ways. One, she was not from a developing country. She was as American as me. And two, though I had taken care of Lorraine until the end, her final day, she had taken care of me far longer. She had taken care of me since the day I was born. For you see, Lorraine was my mother, and I was the one holding her as she passed away. And at that moment, I realized that it really is the simple things that have impact, great impact, because had she just gotten a simple exam, she would have survived. And it has been the focus of my life, looking at these simple things that can mean the difference between life and death for so many. Because you see, we have most of the medical treatments that we need. The problem is, is that we don't get them to those who need them in the way that they'll use them and at a price they can afford. 
And so the problem isn't a scientific problem. I believe the problem is a business problem. That is the solution to distribution. And I apologize, I can get a little intense. <laughs> I can go from, friends, my, my friends say you can go from zero to intense, Eric, in a really, really quick. And I get to travel all around the world, and it's actually exciting for me because sometimes it's like, you, like in a National Geographic movie. It's like, oh my God, this is like, wait, 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 really interesting. And then other times it's like Slumdog Millionaire. And the thing, there's like three things that I can always find in developing countries. One, I'll find incredibly hardworking people who are doing extraordinary things under really bad circumstances. And there's two other things I can always find. One is a Coca-Cola, and two is a cell phone. Anywhere you go in the world, you can find a Coca-Cola and a cell phone. I can be in the middle of a jungle, and there'll be somebody there to greet me with a Coca-Cola on ice. <laughs> and if you sort of think about it, how do we get all these things all over the world? I have a problem, if I leave the house, and go around the corner, I've lost my keys. <laughs> and somehow you're able to get all these things over there. Well, let me tell you what they do. They do three things really, really, really well. They push, they pull, and they evaluate. They push, they pull, and they, that's all they do. Let me hear you do it. Can you do it with me? Push, pull, evaluate. Push, pull, evaluate. That's all they do. So let me tell you about Coca-Cola. What they do is they push the products out there. They have 150,000 distributors all over the world who are pushing these, are pushing, 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 pushing these products out there. But while they're pushing, 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 guess what's happening? The competition's also pushing, pushing, pushing. So what Coca-Cola says is that we need to create a, a pull. So they say, we need to have our marketers working on this. It's just not good enough to push. If our marketers work on this, and we'll come up with little catchy jingles, because we need to distinguish our products from all the other products. And so the marketers create a pull for the customers. So while the distributors are pushing their products out there to the customers, the marketers are pulling the customers in. But that's just not all. The other thing that has to happen is because, because landscape is kind of dynamic and is always changing, they have to evaluate what's working. What's not working? How can we do this better? How can we lower our costs and increase our sales so we can distribute it more? Well, these same things are, it can happen for us to distribute healthcare around the world. We just have to remember sometimes they're a little bit, slightly different things that we just need to consider. Because if we begin to think of our patients as customers, we treat them differently. And if we begin to realize that the competition is often disguised as stigma and shame and poor roads, we can begin to overcome this. But it really doesn't change what we have to do, which is to push and to pull and to evaluate. To push, to pull, and to evaluate. It's the exact same processes. Let me tell you how this is actually happening in some countries in Rwanda, which I used to work in for many, many years since 2006 and have lived in off and on, it's just this an amazing place. Most people think of it as a place that was just had a horrible genocide back in 1994, and it is that place. 800,000 people were killed, and it left the country really in shambles with lots of people injured and lots of people infected. And by 2000, Rwanda had one of the worst Child and, infant child and maternal mortality rates in the world. It was like the bottom of the bottom. But what they had, however, were lots and lots of people. It's incredibly densely populated. So what they said was, we don't have a lot of money, but we got a lot of people. Let's use what we have to give care. And that is actually what they did. They created community health workers, volunteer community health workers to help push the services out. 
to push these things out. It's almost like a, it's like a volunteer neighborhood watch, except what they're trying to do is not prevent crime, but to prevent disease, going house to house to house to house and helping people, looking at them. And if they don't understand what to do, they can just text message it to a nurse. What am I supposed to do? And they'll get it right back. And so what this does is it pushes the care out to those who need it. But they also needed to create a, pu a pull, a pull in. So from the president on down to local tribal leaders, local village leaders, they're all talking about the same message. They also created health insurance, community health insurance that about 95% of the people have, and they pay a little premium for it. But what this does is it helps pull them in for preventative stuff. It pulls them in, and they're always evaluating, always evaluating. I've never seen so many spreadsheets in my life because they're always trying to think, how do we make this better? How do we make this better? This has allowed them to drop their maternal and infant, mort maternal and infant mortality rate 60% in 10 years, going from the bottom of the bottom to the top of the top in terms of change each year. Not just talking about Africa, but really the world. In just 10 years, they just pushed, and they pulled, and they evaluated. And this is also happening in many other places. They may do it differently using entrepreneurs, and they may use it franchises, but they will do the same thing. And this is actually one of the ways that global health is beginning to change, using these business strategies. And this is one of the things that I talk about in my book about how people are doing this and changing all this, and it's giving us a new place for hope in global health, because simple things really do have a great impact, as simple as vinegar. Who would have ever thought that vinegar could save a woman's life? And it's actually vinegar that could have actually helped save my mother's life. Because you see, if you put dilute vinegar, which is also called acetic acid, on a woman's cervix, you put it right here and it will turn it white. It allows the provider to see it, and because it's just a wart, they can just freeze it off with a cold probe. Patient cured. And there's also vaccines to prevent it altogether. And so all of these things are occurring, and it was one of the things, but it only really works if people can get it. So having all these scientific discoveries only works if we can get it to folks which is what prompted me a couple of years ago to leave Los Angeles, and I love Los Angeles, it has beaches and everything, a job of 20 years to actually come here to Dallas to become the director of global health at the George W. Bush Institute. Because the focus of the Institute is to take good ideas and move them into action in order to have impact. And that's exactly what I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to be a part of. And the other thing, that they pulled me in was that they wanted to focus on cervical cancer so that I could help get out all these programs. And so we created something called the Pink Ribbon Red Ribbon, which is a public-private partnership between the Bush Institute and the US government through PEPFAR and UNAIDS and Komen and a bunch of other organizations. And what we do is we work with countries to push these programs out there and to pull the patients in and evaluate. Our first country that we started in was in Zambia. And for Zambia is in southeastern Africa. It has about 13,000 people, all pretty poor. And it has also the dubious uh, distinction of having the highest cervical cancer death rate in the world. But this is the country that's taken adversity and turns it into an advantage. They've created a clinical research center for cervical cancer called CITERS. They, a, a, uh, they also have the, the Africa's first center for women's cancers. And so what they have done is they push these, these services out. In the past two years, they have now been able to expand uh, treatment, expand this to 50,000 women. They're able to pull people in by having a first lady of the country who is also a gynecologist who understands she's treated people with cancer, and she's able to pull people in from the top of the government through to, the, uh, to, to all the people in the community. 
President and Mrs. Bush actually go there frequently to help her in the country. And they also evaluate, so they actually can do this even better. Whenever I go to a, a foreign country, I really want to go see the patients. I want to see what they're doing, because that's actually why I do the work that I do. And I was recently in Zambia, and there was a long line of women coming into a clinic. And I saw one of the women, and I began looking at her. And she was like so nervous. She was so nervous. And I thought to myself, why is she so nervous? Does she have pain? Is it bleeding? Does she wait too long? And so when they brought her into the room, I kind of slipped in back next. I stood by the door to give a little privacy. And the nurse relaxed her. And she put a little vinegar on. And we waited. And we waited. And we waited for about a minute, which seemed like eternity. <laughs> and she kind of, the nurse sort of looks at her and she says, everything's normal. You can get dressed now. And I thought to myself, oh my God, the power of such simple things. And this is the work that I do in developing countries. But the kinds of problems that they have there, we also have here. So the question that I asked you in the beginning is, what simple thing are you willing to do to save your life is relevant right here. Because we all have some challenges. It might be we need to bring our cholesterol down. Or anybody here need to lose a little weight? I know I do. <laughs> so think about it. We have to use these same processes. We have to push, push ourselves outside the comfort zone. We need to push our way away from the table. We need to find what motivates us, what pulls us is the thought that we want to be around to see a grandchild. Is it that we want to see our child graduate from high school? Is it that we want to just squeeze back into those pants we have in the corner because they shrunk them at the cleaners? <laughs> whatever motivates us, whatever pulls us, and then we have to evaluate it. Does it work? Does it not work? And then tweak it as we go along. These same push pull and evaluate is true for all of us. And you may also wonder, how about the same processes? The processes that work for an organization or a country work for me as well. The issue is, is that organizations are made up of people just like you and me. And what happens on the global scale also happens on the local scale. Because in reality, we're not different. We're only one. And so I ask you again, what simple thing will you do to save your life? And I would encourage you, please, if you use Twitter, tweet it. Give, inspire us with all the simple things all the simple things you're going to do to save your life. Thank you. <clears throat>